Hello, and welcome to today's museum moment. My name is Molly Dubin, and I am the curator of the Jewish Museum Milwaukee. And today I am thrilled to have some wonderfully talented colleagues with me talking about the holiday of Tu B'Shvat, New Year for the Trees. So today we are going to be talking with our good friends and creative individuals, Cynthia Beth Rubin and Yona Verwer. They are both members of the Jewish Art Salon. So to give you a little bit of background on this fantastic organization, the Jewish Art Salon is the largest Jewish visual art organization. It was founded by Yona Verwer and Holly Wolf and based, it is based in New York City. It is a global network of contemporary artists and scholars. The Salon provides programs and resources and develops lasting partnerships with the international art community and the general public. Since 2009, the Jewish Art Salon has organized over 60 art exhibits in the US, Israel, and Europe, as well as workshops and other events. These explore contemporary Jewish themes related to current issues, reflecting popular interests and broader societal means. Currently, it has a bi-weekly virtual open studio program with presentations by artists and curators. So before I turn it over to our friends, I just want to thank our Milwaukee-based friend, Robin Cohen, for sponsoring today's museum event. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to Cynthia and Yona. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Molly. Um, Tu B'Shvat is a Jewish holiday that gets its name from the date on which it occurs, the 15th of the month of Shavat. This year it starts tomorrow night and continues on Thursday. Tu B'Shvat marks the beginning of the new year for trees. We commemorate the season in which the earliest blooming trees in Israel emerge from their winter sleep and begin a new fruit bearing cycle. Judaism has several different new years. Just like in the US, we have the calendar year from January through December, the school year, September through June, and fiscal years. So it's basically the same idea with the various Jewish new years. The new years for trees has to do with tithing 10% of Israel's harvest. The other three new years in the Jewish calendar have their own reason for being, and we'll get back to that in a few minutes. So how do we celebrate Tu B'Shvat? In the 16th century, Kabbalists created a Seder ritual that sort of mimics the Passover Seder. It involves drinking four cups of wine, but in this case, eating fruits and discussing the spiritual significance of fruits and the seven species that are described in the Torah. Wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranate, olives, and dates. And this custom has gained popularity in the US as well. 25 years ago, I hosted my first Seder, and nowadays you can easily find the special fruits in grocery stores in the United States, like here. So because it's the new year for the trees, the idea of ecology has become a natural part of dealing with uh, thinking about Tu B'Shvat and the month of Shabbat. And of course, we can't have trees without water. And so the whole month of Shabbat is also identified with water. Here are some representations of the zodiac sign for the month. You see an Israeli postage stamp from 1962 and actually from 1716. The credits cut off a little, but it's a prayer book from Germany from 1716. And then we also see this idea of the water bearer in a mosaic. And this is the well-known Beit Alpha synagogue in Israel. Dr. Elisa Samson told us that the zodiac has been used as a Jewish religious decoration dating back to the second century in the Near East. So here you see the month of Shabbat with the water bearer on the lower right, kind of upside down. And then we turned it upright on the upper left of your screen. Signs of the zodiac and constellations have long been recognized by Jewish scholars as having a place in creation. This here is a painting from a Polish synagogue. Um, the word mazel in Hebrew letters at the bottom of the image signifies one's constellation or fortune. And this living tradition of painting the zodiac continued over the centuries in synagogue art in Galicia where the mazelot, as they are called, were painted on wooden walls. 
here we are viewing the Stanton Street Shul on New York's Lower East Side, where I was a congregant way back. And this was filmed before its recent renovation. You see the Zodiac paintings on the walls. They are an echo of the life that immigrants left behind, in this case, Galicia. And these paintings were an integral part of their effort to communicate and transmit the transition traditions of the old country to the new. Here is the Shavat image of the synagogue. Can zodiacs be in a synagogue? As we asked Dr. Alyssa Sampson. About the nature of Mazel and whether it's something that's astrological or something that's even of a desire, which is um, idol worship of some type. So why are we engaging this material as artists? It's already very moving material. Leona and I come from very different approaches as artists, but we agree that we want to assert people's imagination, correct past and present, offer new interpretations, and especially make community connections. And we feel we can do that. The Stanton Street Shul is one of the places that you walk into and you immediately feel a sense of the past. You feel an echo. You can imagine yourself being there a hundred years ago. And so we were trying to create that feeling uh, while thinking about the actual meanings of the months. And we put that together and created this image, which is a composite of things that are in the neighborhood, elements in the neighborhood, and also what the month itself stands for. So we're going to take you through this image. Um, here's the bottom where you see an uh, apartment building in the neighborhood with some leaves. Shavat brings us into nature a little, and you'll notice the motifs on the apartment building are nature, um, vines, which are again bringing in nature, the sense of trees. We've actually used this in m many of our pieces. So, um, Sorry. As we're moving up, we see the image of the well, which is you know the symbol of the water bearer of Aquarius, which belongs mm -hmm. to the month of Shabbat. And it's placed within a frame of sorts. We call it a cartouche. And that's a style that is an element that is copied from the Polish paintings. And as we're moving up, more vines, we get to the menorah. And the menorah, this particular menorah, of course, it's there all the time. But you think about the branches of menorah or the stalks, and you see that there's nature on it again. We see leaves uh, in the actual decor of the menorah. And so here it is again in our full image to give you a sense of what we just led you through of combining the past and the present for celebrating the month of Shabbat. So what are the unseen parts of our world? Because the unseen parts of the world are very important in what we're doing historical memories, lost artifacts, symbolic interpretations. But for Shabbat, we also think about life-sustaining ecosystems. So a number of years ago, when I had an artist residency at the International Jewish Artist Residency, also known as Archibuts, I worked on this piece where we were. And this, by the way, Jonas curated this into shows. So it's a bit of a collaboration, even though um, it was an image that I developed independently. And I wanted to show the same trees that I showed you a minute ago. This is the source material and the water. But the water here, it's not just mud, it's actually vital mud, because inside that mud is microscopic life. And without the microscopic life, we don't have trees. And so I developed using augmented reality, an interactive work that actually people explore and they find the microscopic life. To bring this to our current work, we turned to Chris Tonsky, who's a web developer, and we said, can we do something interactive with our zodiacs? We know they're 12 months, we're getting to them. This is what we have right now. And so Chris, worked with us, we reconfigured the image that we had vertically to make it horizontal, and now we actually work both vertically and horizontally. And you can see some of the same elements, and then here it is in the website, um, with music by Bob Gluck, by the way. And this is what happens when you hover the mouse over the web page. Different videos will pop up. So, Fantastic. Here we have the water. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful experience. And then we move over to the apartment building. Uh, 
Pause for you. Who lived in these apartment buildings? Okay, so that was my aunt singing in Yiddish. Um, Earlier we spoke about there being four new years. Here are the other three. This is the month of Elul, which by the way is my birth month, and it's the new year for cattle. And it also has to do with tithing in Israel. And the first day of the month is, um, well, anyway, it's the new year, that year. And uh, the month is represented by Virgo, uh, featured here as a woman in harvest season. <laughs> So, because it's Virgo, we wanted to have women in it, mm -hmm. and then we will move to the first potential woman. So after all, the immigrant experience is so integral to this. And then here we have the month of Nissan, which is the first month in spring, and it's associated with uh, March, April. And of course, um, the major holiday of Passover falls in Nissan, uh, hence the cup on the upper left side. Um, Cynthia, I want to talk about the cup? Yeah, so this cup actually is a glass that was used at Passover Seders in my family, and it belongs to the same woman that you saw my grandmother's sister, my aunt Dottie. So we're really tapping into the past year. And the last month is uh, Tishrei, which is the new year for years, for sabbatical years and jubilees, and also for the planting of trees and herbs. And we know this day as Rosh Hashanah, which we celebrate by here in the shofar, praying and eating sweet foods. And let's watch the little videos. Again, the apartment building is really vital to get a sense of where you are. And then we move over to my Aunt Dottie, who was very active in the first feminist wave. Behind the Mahitza and the Staten Street Shoal, where she wasn't actually there, I composited later. <laughs> so, thank you to everybody who contributed to this ongoing collaboration. We're doing more, um, and our music people, and thanks to our historical consultant, Alyssa Sampson, and thanks to the Milwaukee Muse the Jewish Museum of Milwaukee, the Jewish Art Salon. You can find us online. I'm at cbrubin.net. And, and I'm at yonaferber.com. And our project is on zodiacs-les.nyc. The LES stands for Lower East Side. And thank you so much, Molly, for hosting this session. Thank you, everyone, for attending. It's been an absolute pleasure. This is just fantastic. What an amazing project, the, the layers, the interactiveness, the, you know, the way it engages so many of the senses. It just is really an, a marvelous piece. And I, I know it's in progress and there are things still to come. So I'm gonna encourage everyone to uh, continue to visit the Jewish Art Salon's website and they send out blasts occasionally as well. I'm sure you can sign up on their website to get information about upcoming events and exhibits and 
the wonderful creative work that they're doing. So thank you, Cynthia and Yona, so much for uh, being with us today and for talking with us about this incredible project and about Tu Bishvat. We could all use a little bit of renewal. So uh, on that, we'll end our broadcast. Thank you to everyone, and we'll see you soon for another museum moment. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay. And people can write to us too from our website, so you can find our contact info. So. It doesn't want to end. Maybe you oh. should. Can you